Right, so, oh, excuse me, the silly bed. So there's a few things I need to mention about the cylinder head. And for you, all you newbies, I want to talk first about spark plugs. So I'll get around to doing, as I'm actually going to build a spark plug tester about testing sparks um, to show you that it might look blue and okay. You know, everyone says just ground the spark plug to the engine, turn your relay over and look for the spark um, but there's a lot more to it than that and I'm going to make actually a pressure chamber with a window and pressurise it to about 12 bar and then ignite the spark plug and see what a shitty, what a normal spark, it looks blue you know people say look for a nice blue bright spark well it's alright saying that but how do you see the difference between one and the other any road, that's a different video altogether one thing I will say about spark plugs is that if you try and stick a normal socket um, now this is obviously way oversized, but if you try to stick a normal socket to get a spark plug out, one of your main issues you have is actually the depth of the socket full stop. And if you get out a long reach socket, just say like something like this, um, sometimes that still isn't deep enough. This is again, it's well oversized, but sometimes you catch on that bottom. The top of the spark plug actually catches on the top of that, and it stops you actually seating the hex onto your uh, spark plug hex. Now I've painted the insides of these passages here because they open to the outside world so I left the spark plugs in, um, the old spark plugs in to um, stop any paint going down into the thread and that's quite important. The other thing is as well is I'd advise that you never th chase the threads out. Um, if you're, you know, any carbon or crap in there actually will help to seal the spark plug better. So if you can get the spark plug out with no real issues, don't chase the threads, you don't want to open it up in any way. And, um, you know, just leave it as it is. The other thing is as well is, you might have lost, uh, and in this case I have, it's down in there, I can see it. There's a crush washer, so you can see on this one here there's a crush washer, this washer here, and it's missing on there. You've got to get that back out, uh, just get a picking tool get in there. But... I've just said about the sockets and what have you, and you might say, well, all right, so if my deep sockets won't reach and so on and so forth, what do I do? Well, there are actually spark plug sockets, and you can generally tell they are because they have this hex on actually on the top. And I don't know how well this is going to come out on the camera, but there is a rubber insert. Let's see if I can get that out. And this rubber insert is designed to, um, that one's a bit crappy, it's not going to come out, but the rubber insert is there to grab the spark plug, if I can get this one out I'll show you, it's nicely pressed in there, I'll give it that, let's get a punch, so there we go, so inside this socket there is this, which is, you can see it's got like a kind of hex shape to it, it was circular, it was just pressed in here, and you see that socket's really quite deep, it has relief on the inside and then it has this insert. And what this insert does, is this insert sits on top of your spark plug, this is the wrong size. But it sits on top of your spark plug and grabs your spark plug. So when you actually do unwind it, you can, it will re retract the spark plug and fish it out. So if you just had this and your spark plug inside, it'll just your socket will come off. Where this is designed to grab your spark plug. Now sometimes you might have one of these and you have some really weird long spark plugs and this still isn't bottoming out. Just pick this out, you'll be able to undo it and then you're just going to have to fish the spark plug out yourself. But that's that. So there are special sockets. They generally come, you know, a lot of the times if you get like a mechanics um, socket set, they will come as a set, which is where I got these from. Um, and yeah, they are designed, they have these rubber inserts on the inside to grab your spark plug. So that's what they're for. If you see these rubber inserts, it's not that they forgot something or it's not meant to be there. The reason why that is there is it, the spark plug sockets. They're actually designed to pull spark plugs out. Anyway, regardless, we're going to have to fish out that um, uh, thrust wash, uh, crush wash and I'll see if I can do it as I'm chatting away. But um, Yeah, so like I said about your threads, is don't try and chase them out. Where is it that one? I can't 
can't remember now. I'll have to take a closer look at it. Regardless, so I've already done the valve lapping with my tool. I'll give it a try out. I test it out. It seemed to be really, really good. Um, off camera, I've done a bit of pot polishing. Now, why haven't I done the video of using the tool? The tool's really easy to use, and I will do a video of that. I just need, I can't do it in here, I need better light. Um, I need to set up the camera properly because there's no point me doing it now. Well, it's already done, but if I did it here, I actually did a video, tried it, and the video was really dark and it was really hard to see what was going on. So I need um, to use my other camera with the macro inside with some really good light and all the rest, like an omni light, so we can actually see what's going on. Um, but off camera, I just took the gruff nuts off the inside of the ports um, with a grinding tool and I did the exhaust pots. I just basically cleaned them all up so you can see that the exhaust pots have just been touched a bit. Just getting rid of the gruff nuts really. I'm not doing any kind of real port and it's just to get rid of the big chunky bits um, that were sticking out from the casting and so on and so forth. So all these have been lapped. I will do a video soon about the actual lapping, how to use that, I'll show you that how that tool works that I used and I'll do a, a, a lot better quality video based on me actually doing these. But I did these off, you know, I started to do these on camera, looked at the footage and it was absolutely fucking shocking. So, stick the valves in, that's what we're going to do next, and then we can stick the head on. So another quick word, a couple of words before you start. The way this whole arrangement works is it's a DOHC, so it's a um, double overhead cam. Not direct overhead cam, because they're all direct if they're overhead cams. Uh, it's a double overhead cam, that's what DOHC stands for. Uh, double overhead camshaft. Uh, they have uh, two springs, and the reason why they have two springs is all to do with a, a resonance of springs and the resonance each spring has and when they stop basically acting like a spring. So there's dual springs, usually dual springs are left and right, so one's coiled in a clockwise direction and one's uh, coiled in an anti-clockwise direction, that's also to help with resonance issues and so on and so forth. Um, for each of these valves at the bottom there is a valve seat for each spring, so don't forget them. Um, they have uh, clip-on umbrella seals for oil seals and we'll get to them when we do that. Make sure when you do your lapping that you get no compound inside the um, valve guides because it will literally ruin them in seconds when you first start your engine. Uh, apart from that, it's all pretty standard with your valve seats, retainers, collets, so on and so forth. So the next thing we're going to do is look at the actual valves themselves. I've done a bit of a, a tiny bit of a clean up job on them, uh, nothing major and obviously lap them. So uh, well, let's get on with that. So Kawasaki and their Ultimate Wisdom back in the day, I don't know if they do this anymore, I think they do, I remember seeing a GSX-R 1200 that had this, but in the castings they have A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I know they forgot the alphabet then. And I've labelled every valve like I showed you previously with valve C. All the springs, collets, valve retainers and seats are all kept with each valve. Uh, each valve has been stored in a bit of WD-40 and as you can see all I've done is I've cleaned up the valve face uh, as you can see it's all whatever shiny-ish and cleaned up the valve stem, taken off all the carbon and I used a brass brush and a Dremel to do this and you can see some of the brass residue on the actual valve it's just made it go ever so slightly golden and you can see that there's our lap surface on our valve So some of you are probably thinking, he's been a dickhead, because he's put all the valves in. Not so much of a dickhead. When it sticks. I do this because it's just, I don't know, I, found it, I find this easier. If all the valves are in place, you can turn the engine 
upside down, uh, the head upside down, and then you just crack on. This just stops the valves from popping out. And, um, yeah, makes it much easier. So then you don't have to keep on flipping it upside down, backwards and forwards. You can just turn it on its side and uh, use your tool and just um, clamp everything up. So that's all the valves in. This is just a bit of insulting tape. Not really high tack or anything, and it just peels clean off. And it resists the valves popping back out. So you can see that when you have it like that, let me give a valve a poke. You see, it just stops it. It doesn't keep it in exactly the same place, it just stops it all popping out. So that means you can turn the whole head upside down like that, and then you can just put all your um, uh, valve um, spring seats on and then you can just crack on from there you know you can load everything in and then just one after the other with your springs just pop them all in